Whether you're a music uh, expert or not, picking out the right music for your wedding is extremely important. And the music that you pick can make or break your wedding. Coming up next, meet my guest, Scott Russo. He is the owner and founder of Perfect Music. Don't go anywhere, we're gonna be right back with motivation. Welcome to Motivation, Ron Henderson, AKA The Fitness King. You know, before the show, I talked about the importance of picking out your music. Well, on today's show, we have my friend, my good friend, Scott Russo. Welcome to Motivation, Scott, how are you? Good, thanks, Ron, good to be here. Yeah, you know, it's a pleasure to have you on. I know you spent a lot of time in the music, you know, as far as being a DJ. Uh, I wanna really talk about your business today, and I, I normally, I do this thing where I like to get up close and personal. Mm -hmm. But you know what? People getting married, that's thats a huge, it's more important than what people think. And I think there's a lot of people actually that know you, but still briefly, where did you grow up? What's your background like a little bit? Then I want to get into perfect music. All right. Well, I grew up, uh, I was born in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, my parents moved when I was two. I caught up to them though, in, down here in Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we, uh, Anyway, I grew up in the, in the, the western suburbs of uh, the Twin Cities area and um, uh, graduated from Orono High School okay. and uh, just kind of went to college locally at Crown College, graduated in 85 and um, just kind of slid into the music business or, you know, the DJ business okay. accidentally. Because I want to talk about that because I know folks at home, you're looking at me, you're looking at Scott and you're... And people know that I used to be in the, the bodyguard business, and you're looking at this guy, you're thinking, he's probably my bodyguard. <laughs> no, he's my friend, but I really want you to talk about what got you into the business. Your, your music is called uh, Perfect Music, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, how did you come up with that name, and why Perfect Music, Scott? Well, how the, the word Perfect Music, or the name Perfect Music, isn't because I'm perfect. Uh, perfect Music, to me, is because of the music. I, I started Perfect Music Entertainment as a Christian DJ, as a Christian company, and I wanted to be able to be, have an effect on people's lives because there were no Christian DJs, mobile Christian DJs out there at the time. So Perfect Music actually represents what I consider perfectly inspired music from the Lord. And, and we're, that's where Christian, anything inspired by God, in my perspective, is perfect. You know, whether it's scripture, whether it's uh, good thoughts or, or music, especially in, in, the, in the mind and the heart of an artist. So uh, perfect music comes from that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And when did you actually start DJing? Before we really get into the heart and soul of your company, when did you start DJing? I started DJing in 1981 when I was a student at Crown College and I needed a part-time job. Okay. And uh, the local uh, roller skating uh, venue had a Christian skating session and I used to go to it, but there was only like 40 people right, at a right. time going. And so I started DJing there. Okay. They, they, they needed someone to do it regularly. And so um, I took that session from 40 people a week to 200 people wow. plus a week. Wow. And then about six, seven months later, mm -hmm. the owner of the venue came up to me and said, Scott, well, I'm having a hard time on Saturday nights. I'm always having to call the cops. Can we do the, can we do the <laughs> Christian skating session on a Saturday night? And so- Because Christians don't fight. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <No. laughs> and, uh, and so anyway, um, that session took off and it started, it averaged about 700 people a night mm -hmm. uh, on a Saturday night. Wow. And so, and that's, and then from there people came and they got to know each other, they got engaged and they, mm -hmm. they get getting married and they come to the skating rink with their wedding gown on and right. their tuxedo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, 
they wanted me to start DJing the weddings. Of course, I was a part-time college student. I had I had no money right, or anything right, to do that. Right. So. Uh -huh. so you have a you have a passion for the music DJing, but you have a passion really for Christian music. Yes, um, Christian music because there's so much back back then. Christian music, there was so much good stuff that wasn't right. being played even on Christian stations because Christian stations at the time, if it had a drum beat in it, it wasn't, right, it wasn't right. going to be on the air. So. <laughs> right. And why do you think that? Why do you think that is? <laughs> oh well, there's a number of things right. I, I could guess at, but I, I just don't think the Christian world was ready for it. You know, okay. I think a lot of old stigmatism, you mm -hmm. know, stigmatisms, um, if that's the right word to say, um, fears of what it might lead to, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. You know. And, and what do you, you know, you're talking about, you had those numbers of uh, 40, 50, 70, it built up. Why do you think, what do you think actually drew the people? I, I mean, other than your smile, because you got this smile that just kind of, you know. But what else was it? Um, I, it started again. Um, <laughs> um, I, I took time out to bring the Lord into it, okay. you know, into the session. Um, and I mean, actually, we sat people down during the skating okay. session and okay. had like a five to seven minute testimonial or okay. devotional. And the, and, and the roller skating rink was the, fine with that? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. yeah, they were for some reason. Well, it brought money Amen. in, so they Amen. weren't going to say nothing. You know what right. I mean? So, so um, and, and, and I think when people that got around, youth pastors, I mean, I think we had a couple youth groups every night, uh -huh. you know, you oh, know yeah. youth pastors, because they knew that their non-Christian kids in their church or whatever were yep. going to hear something. I mean, it right. wasn't heavy, right. but it was something that would impact their life. Right, right. Because they, oh, this guy is stopping the whole ranks, having to sit on the floor, and he's reading from the Bible for a couple right, minutes. Right, you know? right, I mean, that's, right. you know, that can, and then a lot of people got saved from mm -hmm. that. Okay. So, and what year did you start, uh, actually, with the perfect music? 92. Mm-hmm. 92. Um, and what what happened during uh, 92 that you just all of a sudden say, hey, I'm going to, you know, start this business? Well... The girl who I was dating at the time, uh, she had she lived in a town home, mm -hmm. and who she ended up being my wife, mm -hmm. um, and we would throw these singles parties, right? Mm -hmm. And t tons of people would come, and we play all Christian music. Yeah, amen. You know? amen, amen. And and it's like, okay, then mm -hmm. from there, all those yep. singles started wanting to get married, and okay. <laughs> you know what the heck, <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, and right. that's kind of mm -hmm. how that started, and and um, I, we were using a home stereo system, and, okay, and uh, you know CD players at the time. Okay, and that was 1992. Players. So you've been in this 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 the wedding business, as far as music, this way. How many years in? That's almost what? 92, 2002, wow. 2012, 20, 20, almost 25 years. Okay, and so, but you, but you. You do other music as well, though, right? Yeah, we yeah mm -hmm. we'll do the tasteful selections of. Of um, of secular music, top forty, country, polkas, you know. I mean, polkas you really got to watch out for. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, we have, we we provide a, a wide variety of music for a wide variety of audiences. You okay. know, especially at a wedding, you've got you've got uh, kids, you've right. got grandparents, and you've got in 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 all the different age groups, you got d d people who live in the in the country, right, live in the right, city, right, in, right, in the right, suburbs. Right. You know, there's a wide variety of music right. that you've got to have in order to keep a crowd engaged and entertained. Right. I agree. So, how do people hear about you? Actually, you know, it's like. I know you because you're a friend, but how do they actually hear about you to even know that you exist? Because I know that when when we got married, uh, we used our nephew. And you know what? I wanted some Christian type music. Okay. Uh -huh. So how do people hear about you, Scott? Well, they, right now they can hear about me or us at uh, www.perfectmusicentertainment.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a Facebook page, Perfect Music Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can call me. <laughs> right. Okay. What's the number for that? 612-251-3796. Okay. Cool. Cool. What is your What is your favorite event to do? I mean, I, I think I know the answer, but what is your favorite type of events to do, honestly? Honestly, I think it's weddings. Mm -hmm. And why? Um, because getting married is such a special day. It's usually the most important day of someone's life. Mm -hmm. And and it's important that more than just someone is going to show up and play music. Right, they want right. someone who's going to be as serious at their, about their wedding sure. as they're going to be. Oh yeah, amen. And amen. Um, and that's what I do. I uh, when a bride hi bride and groom hire us, 
uh, we take them from the, the, the time that they hire us and we walk them through the entire process. We're with them all the way up until their wedding day. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, um, we help them plan out the reception. Most right. brides and grooms don't have never had a reception right. before, so <laughs> they don't know what to do to plan it. Yep. Um, so, you know, what things to consider, you know, uh, do we do a grand march? Do we do a grand march with the wedding party or is it just... Right. A number of other, you know, you know, you've got the grandparents, and, and, and if so, and if there's special considerations for special guests out of town, right? Um, there's just so many different things to consider, okay. and uh, and and we want to custom tailor their reception to whatever their family or personal right. relationship right. needs are. Right. Because yeah. is it is it the music as important what you play even before, as as well as afterwards? In other words, if people are sitting there too long and there's no music going, people are like, uh, you know. Well, yes. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to, ha you know, you don't want gaps, you right, know. Right. Uh, but but at the same time, if there's nothing happening, it's important yep. to keep the crowd mm -hmm. educated or informed as to what's happening next. If the if the bride and groom and the wedding party are out having pictures, they want to know, okay, how long are we going to be sitting here? And I and you know, you, we just get on the microphone and say, hey, you know what? Coming up shortly, we're going to have the grand march. It's in about 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Right. Just so they know what's right. going on, so they're so they're kept up to sure, date so sure. they don't know they don't have to wonder what's going yeah, on yeah you sound very passionate about this yes it's very important that right. a wedding go off without a hitch i mean i've taken weddings from unfortunately <laughs> some disastrous situations <laughs> sometimes me, me, folks at home do you want to hear a disaster story no let me hear just share like maybe a, we'll call it a war story but share like one or two things that have happened well i'll share this one okay, okay so this no names don't give the no, names no, of the no no i can't even remember it was 20 years ago yeah. but this but one particular situation bride and groom um uh and we're at the reception and the music's playing and the people are eating and i happened to look down for probably two minutes while i'm, I'm i was eating behind my booth you know right. there's a buffet mm -hmm. line and and all of a sudden the place got really quiet and mm -hmm. i looked up and the groom was sitting at the head table by himself arms crossed, <laughs> slouched down in the chair. And the groomsmen aren't around, the yep. bridesmaids aren't mm -hmm. around, the bride's not around, and the crowd is just kind of, you know, you know how sure. a, dull, a dull murmur. Sure. Like know? a limbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. like, what's going on? And so I, I got up out of my chair, went over to the groom, and he had shared with me that his brand new truck was just trashed by his groomsmen who threw Cheerio, a box of Cheerios inside of it. Okay. <laughs> and apparently he had a short fuse about that, and, and, I, and I thought, well, Hmm, okay, well, um, you know, this is, you know, and I kind of enlightened him a little bit as to what the day was really about. Right, you know, right. in 10 years, oh, yeah. his truck would be rusted out and gone. He's in Minnesota. So, but, you know, he still didn't want to hear that. So I, I went over and I found the, you know, I went across the room and through the door to the bathrooms. And, um, and the, one of the bridesmaids was outside and I said, so where's whatever the girl's name is, we'll call her Naomi. Uh, where's Naomi? Um, uh, well, she's in the bathroom crying. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, can you have her come out, you know, and so she, she goes, okay, you know, she said, Scott wants to see you, and so she came out, she wiped her tears right. and came mm -hmm. outside, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I listened to what she had to say, and it was just so sad, it was the most, it was the most important day of her life, and, right. and, and I said to her, I said, you know what, this is the day that you and your husband and I have planned on months ago, mm -hmm. and you know what, this, your, your, your marriage is meant to be a blessed experience, a blessed right. relationship. Amen. Amen. And so let's just take control of this thing right now. Let's just pray. And I just laid my hand on her shoulder and I said, mm -hmm. and we prayed and we prayed that the evil one would be uh, cast out from the situation Amen. because uh, cause a marriage is a blessed union between the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly all the rest of the prayer, but, yep. but at mm -hmm. the end of that, I said, okay, you go inside and you get yourself, um, you know, ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go talk to, call him Rick. Okay. And so I went over and talked to Rick and, and, and had a few encouraging words with him. And he, he saw the, the situation as it really was, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I told the same thing, Tim, the same thing. I said, don't let the joy of your occasion be overshadowed by a material thing right, like this, right, you know. Right. For, for some reason, he was just caught up in his brand new truck. So, but anyway, so I got up behind the, the DJ thing and, and uh, DJ stand. And Naomi came out from the ladies' room, stood at the door, mm -hmm. and he, he was he stood up at his chair, and I said, "Okay, everybody, I haven't heard any tinkling of the glasses yet today." Mm -hmm. And so I, and it was kind of faint at first. Right. I said, "Come on, I don't hear those glasses, you know." Okay. And they started getting louder, and so he pulled, mm -hmm. he he walks out from behind the 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 table, and she takes a couple steps in. It was kind of like inchworms, you know. Okay. But okay. they finally met in the middle, yep. and they. 
and they kissed and the crowd went crazy and the rest of the night was wonderful. Amen. Did you so. perform the wedding too? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm thinking you're like you're like the, you're like the minister. You know, I went I went to your site and I confess I did and I read I got tired of reading the testimonies. There's so many testimonies about the kind of work that you do, and I looked at that and I thought, folks at home, I thought you're like a marriage whisper. You got the horse whisper. No, you're like this, and I can see you. you I know you talked about why you call your business perfect music. But I looked at, I read those testimonies, I was like, you are really good at what you do. And even on motivation, I try to make it a point that I bring people on this show that have something to say that's going to impact people. And wedding, that's the most important day of your life, okay? I mean, you got the day you were born, the day that you die, you got your wedding, <laughs> okay? Exactly. <laughs> Amen. Amen, okay? And so I thought it was real important for you just to kind of share uh, this, you know, just to share a little bit about that, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you do a tip, you do a typical wedding. Uh, how much planning as far as like even after once the the con, you know they consummate the marriage, the music afterwards, you roll off into that. What's that typically like? Can you rephrase that question okay. for me, Ryan? The marriage is over. They yeah, they the, put the, the rings on. Oh, the wedding's the, over. The, so then you're just they're playing the music. How do you roll into that? I mean, progressively, is it just like boom, boom, boom? Or is well, it, usually the wedding is it's about 25% of the time the wedding and the yep. reception mm -hmm. are in the same location, yep. in which case I have to run the sound and the music for the wedding yep. too. Yep. But, but most of the time they come in and it's a grand march, you know, and we introduce the wedding yep. uh, the wedding party, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, the ring bearer and the flower girl if there's such right, a thing. Right. And, um, and then they usually march in and they... Um, just for expediency, we have them cut the cake at that point if there's right. going to be a cake to be cut. Sure. And then they come to the head table, and yep. um, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a welcome usually by the by the one of the parents of the of mm -hmm. the bride and groom, and um, and then the, there's a blessing if if there's a if if it's a Christian couple, there's a, usually a parent or right, someone right, who right. who uh, prays over the meal, and then the meal served, and okay. then and then uh, after the meal served, there's usually some toasts, and, and this is this is very simplistic. Sure. Version of it. I'm just, you know, right. there's so many oh, yeah. more details involved right. in that than right. just this. But sure. then, but then, um, uh, and then we then we do the first dance, you know, okay. uh, by the bride and groom, All and right. um, and then it just kind of kicks off from there. And then there's other different options you can do: the okay. the, the bouquet toss, the right. the you know. It's, it sounds things. good. Let me ask you a question. Now, I I kind of know a little bit, but what would you say? What sets you apart? Uh, between other DJs, other than the fact that, you know, uh, well, I think it's huge. I won't say other than the fact, I mean, the fact that you pray for people, that you're really concerned, but what else, what else would you say really sets you apart as a DJ? I think the personal touch, because most multi-op, when it be my multi-op DJ companies, is that they have four to 24, whatever it is, DJs that they send right. out every night. And, and you'll know maybe a week or two ahead of time before your wedding, what DJ you're going to have. And if you're lucky, you'll actually get to meet that DJ. Okay. You know, yeah. well, mm -hmm. with us, within 24 hours of when you book with us, there's basically, we have uh, me and Mike Carrier. Uh, he's a great guy. He's been with me for years. Mm -hmm. uh, he loves, well, he's been, actually been in Christian radio for over 30 years. Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll know which one of us is going to be with you. And we're going to walk you through, if you have any issues, you know who can, you can talk, contact directly right, right away. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. and if there's any, mm -hmm. you know, special situation you need to be aware of, you can be in contact. We also have an online planner where if you decide to change something in the reception um, order or an event or whatever, you can log in by your phone or on the, on, right. on the website yep, yep. and make changes that way. Mm -hmm. um, and where do they, what's your website again for that too? Perfectmusicentertainment.com. Okay, and how much does a DJ's personality have to do with this too? Because I say that because I've been to weddings and it's like, I've seen the bride go, can you play this? And the DJ just had an attitude. I'm like, you're spending all this money in the DJ. That's your wedding. Right. Well, um, you know, that's interesting. Requests are, what I usually, as far, let's just, I'm going to start from a different perspective okay. on, mm -hmm. on requests. What, I know a lot of DJ companies out there, will, they'll have an online planner and they'll say, go ahead and pick whatever music you right, want. Right, right. <laughs> then and, 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 and I know this because I, there's a DJ <laughs> company that calls me once in a while and they don't know they have enough DJs to cover the weddings right, that they right. booked months ago. Yep, okay? yep, yep. And so they'll, <laughs> I'll see, I'll see a hundred, 125 music requests. Well, there's mm -hmm. no way you're going to play 125. Right, to me, exactly, that, to sure. me, that's a disservice to the bride and groom sure. because they spent all this time picking out this music, oh, yeah. and you, mm -hmm. nowhere near is, is you're going to be able to play that. But so I I, what I do is I mm -hmm. tell a bride and groom, I say, give me 10 songs that you want yep. played for mm -hmm. sure. 
Give me another 10 songs that you'd like to have played, but if they're not played, you're okay with it. And then leave the rest of the request up to your guests. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and it makes it life very simple. And it usually, I mean, if you think about 10 songs in itself is about a half hour's worth of music. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Is, does that answer your question? It does. It does. Yeah. And what else? What other things do you do during the wedding? To let's say, if you look and there's kind of the, there's a low in the wedding, people seem like they're not really moving around. And I asked you that because again, going to your website, mm -hmm. I saw some people with blindfolds. And I was like, what is this about? <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, we there's a number of things that, that, that kind of you... seemed weird at the Christian wedding. Blindfolds on. <laughs> that, that was actually a video sent to me by a customer. It's an old video, but okay. it was very funny. Um, but uh, there, there's different events. Uh, first of all, one of the things you can do is you can change up the style of music. Right. Because mm -hmm. cause, um, you don't want to play to one particular style of music yep. all night long because you got grandma and grandpa who might want to do polkas and waltzes. Right, you might have right. might have mom and dad who want country music, right. you know. Yep, so yep. you do a two or three song set of each particular type of yep. music, at least mm -hmm. for sure at the beginning sure. of the night. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. as long as the um, the people the older folks are around, you want to keep them engaged and you want everyone to walk away from that wedding no matter what Sure. lifestyle they have say that was so fun oh yeah you know that was a fun time i mean you, yep. people can spend mm -hmm. thousands of dollars on, on and they do on things and you know uh, the photographer do. the mm -hmm. videographer mm -hmm. but the only thing that people are going to remember they're not going to remember the, the flowers right you know they yep. might remember yep. one picture but they are going to remember was did they have a great time at that wedding or not? exactly you know exactly. and that's what you and that's my job yep. you know and sometimes people oh you know and i'll tell you right now if you're looking to have a five six hundred dollar dj come to your wedding mm -hmm. that's not us right because yep. we are a full service dj company yep. you know mm -hmm. and and so and there's a lot of multi app companies out there who will throw a dj out at your wedding the last minute yeah, I, actually i had a bride come to me the other day she's been she'd been married about a year okay and she said you know, I met with the owner of the company, mm -hmm. and we went through this planning meeting for an hour and a half, and the DJ came to my wedding, and he didn't have any of that. Wow. He, had, he had no wow. idea what wow. I talked to the owner about, wow. and he just kind of winged it, and mm -hmm. it, I was so disappointed. And, and, yep. and, and that's kind of what I mean by, we're there, and we're going to bring it, because we've, we're, we're with you, we're engaged with you, right. we want your event to be what you dreamed about. We want your dream, right. girls, Guys, I don't know, guys usually don't dream about this, but ladies, right. they dream about how their wedding is oh, yeah. you know, from when they're four or five years old, you know? And oh, yeah. we want those dreams to come true. Yeah. That's so important. It is important. Because you know what, you have memories. Mm -hmm. You have memories of your wedding, and and mm -hmm. what are those memories gonna consist of? Oh, yeah. You don't want regrets. Oh, yeah. you know? And it's interesting because we had, what is it? Uh, and I love that song, by the way. It's not Christian, but it's not, you know, it's Michael Bublé, I'm a shining star, Papa. I mean, every time I, I hear that song, I smile, I think about my wife. Uh -huh. And it was just, it was great. And those, the memories, it, it, it music is, is, is huge. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it communicates things that words by themselves right. cannot. Right, so somebody's sitting out there, you know, like I said before the show, summertime, a lot, lot more people getting married, they're watching the show. Uh, what are some things that they should think about before they pick up the phone and actually call somebody? I mean, do you, you kind of run people through different things that they should well, kind of know? Well, yeah, I, I would guess, first of all, and of course, I'm a, I'm a DJ, so I'm going to say this, budget, put a big, bigger budget than you originally anticipated for, mm -hmm. for a DJ, if, and you want it to be a good DJ, because, I, I mean, wedding planners tell me all the time, I work with some wedding planners, the DJ can make or break your wedding. Oh, yeah. So don't plan $600 for your, for your DJ. Right. I mean, there's, a, there's one website out there that has a DJ bid, well, you, you don't want someone to. You want the. You don't want the lowest bidder to be your <laughs> right, DJ. Right. You know. So it's for the most important day of your life. You know. So right. I would. I would budget. You know, anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars for your DJ because right. they're good. If they're good. Uh, if they're worth their salt, they're going to give you at least that much. You know, and you'll always remember it. Yeah. Get you know? somebody out there. I guess the other thing is. Um, Know, know what you're going to want. If are you, what kind of wedding are you going to have? Are you going to have at a church wedding or or at a venue um, that is separate from the actual reception area? Right. You're going to have to plan for extra sound, you know, mm -hmm. because you need microphones. Like if you're in a field or if you're in a different part of the reception hall for the wedding right, or whatever, right. you know, you've got to plan ahead for for all that kind of stuff. Um, boy, there's so many. There's so many. What ifs I'm about sure. that, Ron? No, I'm, you know, I'm sure. You know, so I'm sure. Give me before we end the show. Give me one little quick war story, where you kind of saved the day. Because I know you're like Superman. You know? Well, 
The, well, I gave you the biggest one that I can remember. I could tell you one that I goofed up, but I don't <laughs> do that. Well, just major human. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, there's always been, and there's, I guess I'm so used to covering. Okay, for example, um, cake cutting. There was a bride who hired a hall, uh, and they brought in a caterer, and they brought in the cake maker, and they brought in, you know, and it's important for us to work with all these right. people, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. and I make sure that, that every person that they hire knows about what's going to happen when it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But I notice in this situation that uh, it was after dinner and the cake is still sitting over there not being cut. Yep. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to go up to the bride and say, you know, hey, who's cutting your cake and have her all worried about it. Sure. Yeah. And so I inquired with the caterer, mm -hmm. who, you know, are you guys cutting the cake? No, we're not cutting the cake. Mm -hmm. We have the plates for it. And, and so I said, oh, no. And so I went up to the, 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 the hostess. And mm -hmm. she got a couple of her friends together, and I said, "Hey, you guys can, can you guys cut the cake and start serving the cake because uh, it was overlooked in the planning part. Yep. Who was going to cut the cake? And so mm -hmm. otherwise, we would have been sitting there for because I'm always ke keeping an eye on what's going on in Which the crowd. Yeah. You know, you don't want those those lulls, you know. Right. And I just wanted to mm -hmm. make sure that everything ran smoothly and that the bride and groom didn't have to be saddled with that burden oh, yeah. on their most important day. Yeah, you know, that's, so, that's 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 uh, that's important. Yeah. That's important. So this, that's what that's an example of what we do. Uh, making sure that things are covered for the bride and groom so that on that day they're, they're not freaking out. Sounds good, sounds good. Scott, I know you're a busy guy, so I don't want to take a lot of your time up, but give me your website and number again one more time. If you've been sure. watching Motivation, my guest is Scott Russo. He is the owner and founder of Perfect Music. And I'm Ron Henderson, a.k.a. The Fitness King. Give him the information. Sure. Uh, phone number is 612-251. 3796. I'll give it to you again. 612-251-3796. And the website is perfectmusicentertainment.com. Perfectmusicentertainment.com. And did you hear that? Perfect music. Not music that's kind of like shaky. Some of these weddings <laughs> I've been at, I'm like, what are they playing? I've been to so-called Christian weddings. I'm like, I had to leave. The music was like I was like I can't believe they're well, playing that though. You know, let me let me. That's what I'm talking thing. about. Tacky to file stuff. <laughs> well, let me. That's a good point. Let me yeah. just say mm -hmm. this, Ryan, is that a lot of DJ companies will say that they have Christian music and that they're right. willing to play Christian music, but they may not have the discernment of what not to play. Right. They might come. They might play your Christ, favorite Christian song. Mm -hmm followed up with some <laughs> song that's totally inappropriate, right. but they don't know the difference. Right. They don't know, yep. they don't yep. have the discernment to, right. to not play the stuff that's contrary to your faith. Yep. You know. Amen, that's important. On that note, I wanna just say this. Guess what I got in the mail the other day? Folks, see this tie? I like it. One of my former guests, Gary Crawford of Got Not. I gotta just share that with you. Thank you, Gary, for sending me this tie. Looking jazzy. I feel kind of underdressed, Ron. Hey, but you got to call Gary. I've got not, okay? <laughs> He's got some good stuff on. But, Scott, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks, Ron. Folks at home, and all that you do, remember, stay fit, stay motivated, and remember, one of the most important things you can do at your wedding, besides showing up, is picking the right music. Today you have met my guest, Scott Russo of Perfect Music. We're going to see you next time on Motivation. Stay fit, stay positive, and stay strong. We'll see you next time. Thank you.